<laughs> okay, please introduce us to yourself. Hey, Ashley, how are you doing? How are you? Good, how are you? Doing great. I'm right, introducing, please in introducing myself. Okay. <laughs> All right, let us know who, who you are. What do you do? Hey, everyone. <clears throat> hey, everyone. I'm Kyle Maxwell. I'm an entrepreneur, CEO of Hard Music Entertainment, small record label. Uh, where, where are you at, actually? Just so I have some context of who I'm talking to. I'm I'm in Florida. In Florida. Oh, cool. So I'm 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 over on the DMV, guys, and um, I have a little record label, Harder Music Entertainment. It's a small thing. It's not too huge. We're not like Def Jam or anything. <clears throat> Basically, I work with artists. I help them build their brands. I do stuff. I'm music producer. Um, also, I started an agency last year, a social media agency, Vivo Media Group, and I help small businesses grow their brands, make content, stuff like that. Um, I post videos on Instagram. Um, maybe I probably come off like a motivational speaker to a lot of people, probably. Um, I make content and I cuss a lot. Um, yeah, that's it. So what, what got you started with, with the record label and with the Viva, Viva Media? It's a great question. Uh, you got some popcorn? I don't have any popcorn, no. That sucks. I really want it. Um, the label story is, is remarkable. Um, <clears throat> you know, sometimes in life, you know, we have those, like, those revelations and, um, like everything changes. It's weird. And it's, and it's things that we don't really prepare for. It's like a, it's like a, it's a shift that just fucking, everything just moves. And those, that was one of those days. Keep on, what's good? It was one of those days. And, um, just to give you some context. <clears throat> I, when people always say, you know, they like my content, they like bits like that, and they, you know, all, all the compliments, I love them. But I, I like to tell every, each individual person, like, just four or five years ago, I was a, I was a nutcase. Like, I was, like, fucking stupid, like, just five years ago. Four years ago. Actually, three years ago. I was a fucking idiot. And it wasn't until I went through all these little transformations that I'm slowly starting to become, like, this person that, I guess people are starting to admire, but um, just to give you context, this was in 2017. Yeah, I was like crazy. I was like stupid, like dumb. <clears throat> I was uh, I dropped out of college because that just that stuff is just not for me. And life is in the shithole. Like I'm hanging around terrible people, I'm doing terrible, I'm not doing terrible things, but I, yeah, I was, doing, I was doing some bad things. I was you know stealing a lot. I was hanging out with you know. These people said that they were in a gang, but I don't believe them. But idiot, but it's just terrible to even associate myself with that. I'm <clears throat> doing bad things. I remember my friend, like, he came over to my house one morning, and we had a list. Like, I, like this is the thing. I want, I want to make this very clear. When you're, like, smart, but, you know, but you consciously make, like, terrible decisions, that's, like, the, yeah. worst, that's the worst combination. Yeah. And I, that, that's who I was. And that's why I slowly grow out of that, because I used my – salesmanship, I use my skills. I use all these skills that I'm manifesting now in a total positive way, but I use them in every terrible way possible, like by manipulating women, by like stealing, by doing terrible things. Like I use all my talents in the you know, terrible wrong way. And I re regret doing that, but you know, that never happened. You know, maybe my life would never turn out this way. But anyway, my, 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 my friend came over to my house. We had a list, like I had a list of places we were gonna go like steal from. Like that's how, that's how like, organized this was i was terrible and one day we it was like 12 o'clock you guys have 7 11 in florida yeah you know, i was crazy i did not know that um yeah we were outside of 7 11 it was like 12 o'clock in the morning and it was me and my uh worthless friend and we were just sitting there just doing nothing and we were just doing i can't even fathom it anymore like we were just doing we we're just hanging out i guess i don't know I, like when i when i always think about it i'm like Cause my mind is so sharp now. It's like, okay, what are we doing now? What am I doing this moment? And we were just sitting there at twelve o'clock in the morning, like outside of a corner store. Like, who does that? Like, I don't, I don't know what the hell we were doing. Maybe we were trying yeah. to find some some chicks. Maybe we were trying to, I don't know, do something. I don't know what the hell we were doing. But I seen some dude, like he was around like forty or fifty years old. For the people joining him, I'm explaining my terrible upbringing. Hey, uh. Uh, Pavon, I always forget how to pronounce her name. It's very difficult, but I know what that is. She was this way. We seen like a forty or fifty year old, like middle aged dude, standing outside the store. He was like, 
smoking a cigarette or something. And we were kind of, and me and my friend were in the car and we were, we were kind of clowning on him. We were like, oh, this guy's such a loser. Like, like yeah. me and him, like us sitting there doing nothing with our lives. But yet both of us had the audacity to make fun of someone else for doing the same exact thing. Very odd, very weird. Not a whole lot of self-awareness going on there. And um, it, it just clicked to me then when we were both laughing at him, but yet that grown man was doing the same exact thing we were doing. And I seen, it was that moment, everything fucking clicked. Like I seen what I was going to be like because he was not doing anything different than the, what me and my friend were doing. And everything clicked. So many things clicked in that part. I realized that I was the leader. Like people were following me. People were following my, my lead. Yeah. And my friend next to me, he's only doing this because I'm doing it. He looks at me and then he makes then he makes an action. And I'm the one that's steering this whole entire thing. And all this began to click. I was like, this is not right. Because if I keep doing the same thing I'm doing, we're both going to end up like this 40-year-old dude, like smoking a cigarette outside of 7-Eleven when he ought to be home doing something productive with his life. We were going to end up like that. So that's when everything clicked. I stopped hanging out with those people. I stopped doing a lot of things. I had a girl at the time, and we were we split up. Like everything was terrible, so I got back with her. Me and my brother weren't on good terms, so me and my brother kind of got that. And I was at a point I was like eighteen, nineteen years old. Everything kind of started to glue us up back together. So when my life was slightly less miserable at that time, I remember back in college, this the big man on campus. He had a record label. I put that in quotation marks. He had a record label. <laughs> And I was like, damn, you know what? I just, you know, I just got a new bunch of new friends. You know, I'm, I'm getting my life back together. You know, fuck it. Maybe I'll try to do that, what that guy did. And that's when I started Heart of Music Entertainment. <clears throat> because I've always been, I always been in music, like, since I was in high school. I was um, in marching band for all four years. I was the best one in there, as you can imagine. I've been producing for a long time. I've always been in music. And at that time, it just felt right because I kind of, envied that dude that had the record label because I, I always felt that I could do it better. So that's why I started it. And um, I started very small. I had like one artist in the beginning. I didn't have anybody, but I continued to, you know, put out content, tell the world what I was doing. I continued to stay consistent with it. And now, you know, I have an A&R in <clears throat> Norfolk, Virginia. That's my guy, Will, um, William Bryant. You guys will follow him. I'll put his uh, thing down there. Two of A&R's in Baltimore, Maryland, Aisha and Tanisha Jackson. Those are like my other two mothers. Like, oh, people are way older than me. Those are my other two in A&R's out in Baltimore. I uh, work with Lou Jack. That's an artist um, where I'm from. Uh, G Slicka. These people are not like little baby yet, but, you know, they will be. And, uh, you know, really, really small group. And, you know, we just kept going, kept going. And getting better in every single year. You know, we're really not trying to, yeah, consistency. And it was uh -huh. good. You started walking on purpose. Yeah. And the whole point of that, I really want to make this point because it's not just, you know, to me just aggrandize myself. I'm really trying to make the point and when you have these skill sets, when you're born with those skills, it's just like, look at Martin Luther King and then look at Hitler. Two people have the very similar skill sets. Two people have very similar, you know, wills to create cultural change, cultural shifts. One person used it terribly evil, you know, like, enslaved people, you know, um, trouble. we don't even talk about what Hitler did. We don't really, we really know what he did. You know, manipulated yeah. people, appeased people, you know, just fiat, everything. It's terrible. And most, a terrible thing you can imagine. And the other person used it to unite people. Martin Luther King used it to bring people together to speak truth and to see unity and to fight for people in their, for their humane rights. Both people have the same skill sets. They have the same exact skill sets. And if you ask me, and if you really read up on history, and you know, Hitler was kind of, he was kind of like, he was kind of better at the showmanship and kind of better at the, and, and he was very and, charismatic. And, yeah, he had to be to take, to control the fucking world. Like, he had the whole entire, mm -hmm. year, he had the European total, whole, whole world from like 1939 mm -hmm. to 1945. This motherfucker had the whole world. So, but both people had the same skill sets, but it's just about how you use them and, and you can decide if you want to use it for good or if you want it for bad. And, it was that day when I, all that stuff started to click. And I realized, you know what? I want to use these talents. I want to use 
you know, my God given gifts and I want to do something. I want to try to do something good with it. Why do you think it's fun to hate Candace Owens? <laughs> that was a great segue. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> why is it fun to hate Candace Owens? You know, yeah. I think Candace Owens is she's I think she represents that little voice in everyone's head that wants to vocalize how they really feel but don't have the courage to. And I think that sometimes we kind of we're kind of pessimistic towards those really underpinnings of ourselves that we want to admit and that we want to she she represents everything that's wrong with people of color the real things that are wrong. Like that, actually, that's in my personal opinion, that's what I think it is. You know, because everyone, you know, labels her a coon. They label, uh -huh. people, they label people like her, oh, she, ha she hates Black people when she wrote an entire book to try to uplift us. You know, that really, you know, nothing says hate Black people like writing a book for them. And people really like to, they, do, they don't like looking at those things. They don't like looking in the mirror. That's just human nature. We don't like looking in the mirror and seeing what's actually wrong with us. We, we, mo we are more likely to want to put up facades and want to put up, you know, other things. You know, hey, it's like, we don't want to be accountable. You know, it's, it's, it's them that are making us fucked up or, or it's them that's causing us all this anguish. People don't like looking in the mirror. And I think Kenneth Owens is a prime example of what it feels like to look in the mirror and look at all your faults and having to do something yeah. about it. So it's not Candace Owens necessarily that necessarily that they that they hate they hate self accountability and they don't like no specific people that hate her they don't like responsibility or looking at their actual flaws. Wow, how has Jordan Peterson helped your life? She is definitely a rat. You have the, you, you have a <laughs> you have your opinion, man. I suggest you look into her more. Sorry, what was that? How has Jordan Peterson helped your life? Oh wow. This is for anyone that don't, doesn't know Jordan Peterson, you know, like, I, I'm a huge Gary Vee fan. And lately I've been watching uh, less of him because, you know, if you if you watch about 10 or 15 videos, this guy kind of says the same shit. And yeah. Really, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's the same Yeah, <laughs> like if, if you don't get the point by the 10th time, then like you're not going to go yeah. anywhere, you yeah. know? <laughs> but I, 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 watch a lot, I watch a lot of his um, content for business purposes because, you know, he says certain things and I'm like, what the fuck is that? Then I go Google it and... I'm kind of, I'm kind of being a sponge, like I'm a sponge. I'm trying to absorb as much as I can from other people. Yeah. And um, that's a, that's a good uh, tactic to use. Not, it's not using people, but it's on just being a sponge and being open to, because that's how I learn. I learn by watching you. I want to watch what Ashley does. I want to watch what Ashley says. I want to watch how she moves, how she interacts with people, how she responds to someone when Ashley's really, really busy and she's still nice. Like I look at all those things and I try to emulate that because those people are obviously successful and I want to adopt some of those things. But Jordan Peterson, oh my gosh, he's like the educated, well-articulated version of Gary Vee. Like, like Jordan Peterson is what Gary Vee would have been if, if Gary Vee was like a scholar in like school. Oh. And, and this guy is really like, he's, he's really well-diverse. And the only reason why I looked into him is because it was around May, I think it was May or June, when all this Black Lives Matter started, all this Black Lives Matter thing started. And... At first, I admit I was on board with it because I was ignorant, and those people, those people are very, um, they're very wise and they're very, uh, they're very charismatic. And the two people that I use in the um, in the beginning of this, they're very, um, they like, they they can draw people in really good, especially people that are ignorant, historically ignorant. And I started seeing you know different things, and I started seeing you know people, you know, walking up to people. In like in restaurants and like screaming at them, saying, "Hey, you better say you better you better you better repeat these words." And I kind of I was like, "Okay, this is weird." And I started to look back. I'm like, "What? Like, what is going on?" I'm always trying to get to the bottom of things. Yeah. And this is why you know a lot a lot of people don't like me. This is why I don't have a lot of friends because I'm always trying to get to the like the root. Like, I don't care about what you're saying. I don't care about what any of that. I want to know the root of it. And the root of all this stuff is history. So that's when I really started to look back in history, looking back in things that Pat that already happened <clears throat> in that channel of looking back in history, that channel of looking back at things was Jordan Peterson. I learned so much from that dude about a whole lot of things that, you know, I won't go in because I'm just going to bore the hell out of you guys. But this guy is really knowledgeable and he, he knows a lot. I started reading, reading a lot more. You know, I, I the same things I sponged off of Gary Vaynerchuk, I'm sponging off of Jordan Peterson, like I'm getting more religious. I'm learning more about history. I'm learning more about, um, I'm actually learning about psychology now. I'm learning about a whole lot of things. 
And um, I think that he's doing something really, really, really great. And um, a whole lot of people, like just like Candace Owens, like a whole lot of people hate him. Like a whole lot of people hate Gary yeah. Vaynerchuk. They hate these people. Yeah. And, and and I don't want to say they hate them because that would contradict what I said earlier. They don't. Like, and, and what's funny is that all three of these individuals, they have one motive. They have one motif. Self-accountability. Do it yourself. Responsibility. Look at the things that are fucked up in you and fix those things. And that's what people don't want to do. So yeah. I, I gravitate towards the towards the underdogs, towards the people that everyone hates, because I feel as if I'm one of those people. Oh, I know, I, I know, know, I know I would be hated. Like people are gonna like if you guys hate me now, like you guys have no idea, like you guys are gonna, you guys are gonna just despise me. When you see my face on on the internet, whatever app we're on in ten years, you guys are gonna despise my my being. Like seriously. So this is a two part question. If you don't remember the second part, um, I'll remind you. Number one. So you know how they have like blackout days for social media. Don't use social media for twenty four hours if you're standing for something. Yeah. Do you think those are effective? And um, what are the pros and cons of them? Um, well, it all depends on you know what we're trying to accomplish. Are you referring to what we ha what we did in uh, June? Yes. Um. See a lot. Um. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> es esoteric vampire. Okay. <clears throat> um, your name is uh quite a quite an oxymoron because there's not really that much to know about vampires. But anyway, yeah. so you can't be that esoteric. Well, what I'm going to say is it all depends on what we're doing. So, in in that instance, she's determined to instill hate hate today. But um, it, it's a matter of what we're doing in that instance. Like a lot of people, a lot of people were overanalyzing that. They're like, "Oh, well, you're gonna you're gonna um you're gonna force all the black history out. All we're gonna see is a bunch of black squares." Like people were really overanalyzing it. What I was looking at it as is um us just like us just militizing ourselves, mm -hmm. us getting in unity and all doing something and getting attention. That's what I looked at it as. Um, how effective those things are? I mean, now I you're you're you're, you're, you're what you're doing right now is you're making me go back into like a whole different mindset than I was because in June, like I was like I said, I go through transformations. Like I'm like a I don't know what the fuck I am. I'm a weird human being. Like. I'll be this mm -hmm. way in 2019, and then 2020, I'll shit on the 2019 version of myself. And I'm pretty sure next year, I'll be like, oh, my God, I was so stupid. Like, what? Like, I was so yeah. dumb. Like, why did anyone want to hear what I had to say? Like, I'm always shitting on the last version of myself. So right now, I'm kind of shitting on 2020 Kendricks right now in the same year. Yeah, I don't, and those things aren't effective. You know, you have to learn yourself. You have to know history. You have to know um, what's actually going on in all those people were, they were acting on a thesis that they had, that they didn't know. It's kind of like, if I tell mm. you, if I kind of, if I tell you right now, hey, do you know all those, do you know Asian people are really mind readers? And that's why they, that's why they're excelling so good in, in um, academics. That's why they're doing so good in school. They don't really have to study. They don't really do anything. They're just reading minds and they know all the answers. And everyone's, and let's say, let's say I got a hundred people to believe that. Now mm -hmm. I have, now I have a hundred people having a total wrong viewpoint of Asian people. And then now they're showing, now they're showing animosity towards Asian people. Now we're adjusting the rules. So Asian people have to take higher tests within the, you know, the same ecosystem as other people. And we're, uh -huh. we're, we're, we're acting on something that's not true. And I think what those people were, what we were doing back then is we attached ourselves to a narrative like that. What I just said, you know, we believed in a, in a, in, a, in an Asian privilege or, or this privilege or some, something like that. We, we were acting on something that wasn't true. And so to ask me how effective that is, if we're, at, if we're doing something and the, and the basis of it isn't even truth, you know, how effective it is is kind of irrelevant because the whole thing doesn't mm. make any sense. Mm. Do you think fun is a weak word? Do I think fun is a weak word? Well, it depends on what you're doing as fun. That for me, fun for me is, you know, thinking of new business ideas or creating it like a new type of content or a lot of folks from some got fear tear gas and spray and some reminder to me and something I don't. Yeah, I'm not I'm not with that at all, esoteric vampire. I'm not with that stuff at all. That's why I switched.
But um, it all depends really on like what you what you're doing what you're doing by fun, and what you, what you what you categorize fun as. And some people smoke weed for fun. Some people, uh, you know, they hook up with girls for fun. I like to uh, start new things and think and strategize and you know look at new artists coming up for fun. Like we all have our different um, definitions of fun. I don't uh, think it's a weak word. I think um, I think deviating from your purpose to for short term, I guess fulfillment or short term. I guess um, what's the word I'm looking for? Short term um, embellishment or not embellishment? Short term um, indulging. I think that is weak. But I mean, you know, we're all human. We all need breaks sometimes. And um, it's just about it's about balancing the fun with their purpose. I know a lot of people. Like I'm seeing so many people like um, like post up in hammocks and you know drinking out of coconuts and shit, and. I, I can just see I can just see right through it. It's like people always say, oh, I need to get away or I need I need to get away. It's like what yeah. like, like what are you getting away from? Like if you, mm. if, you if you like to life, if you like oh, what wow. you're doing, why would you why would you need to get away? Like when do you wanna stay here and keep doing what you're doing? So the fact that people are so pressed for getaways is because they wanna get away from reality. They wanna get away from what they're doing day to day. And I think if we can get to a point where the getaway is our actual life you know we want we wouldn't want to we wouldn't want to get away from that you know like it, the whole entire point is you know to, to try to find to do something that that you love doing and i haven't i've never been on vacation ever in my whole entire life i don't think because i don't want i don't want to get away from what i'm doing why don't, why don't i want to get away from what i'm doing because i love what i'm doing i want to do it more uh. so it's, you know one man's opinion everyone struggle about cancel so i'm here I, I like message me esoteric vampire. Yeah, I'm very we, curious about we need, you. Uh, we need more um, of the esoteric vampire community of opinions. We need to like, yeah. <laughs> of the other. Okay, vampires. so um, what what is Clubhouse, and should we get on that social media app? Um, yeah, if you guys looked at my story last week, I was like, I wasn't shredding Clubhouse, not, and trust me, I'm not the type to uh, I'm not the type to bash social media because I hate when people do that. But mm -hmm. I, but I am the type that will you know call out reprehensible behavior when I see it and <clears throat> I, and I think I was sharing my opinion and I was doing my best to kind of change this shift because that was the whole point of me getting on Clubhouse is an app basically you get in rooms and you talk to people and that's never really occurred um, social media has never really had a had a platform where it was strictly audio and it was strictly people random strangers all talking but I think the closest app that that emulates that is Twitter and again, and, yeah. that's, and that's why those two apps are like side by side because they both share a common thing. Strain, all a bunch of strangers talking. That's what Twitter and Clubhouse is. And a matter of should we get on it? I mean, I mean, it, you know, do your thing. You know, hop on it if you want to. I think it's a great way to network. I think it's a great way to um grow your brand and to grow your audience. But I will call out this type of um behavior and this type of underpinning behind the app. And what I was seeing a whole lot of last week is kind of like a, a high school thing going on. I was going to say, it sounds very high school like, Yeah. And, and and here's the thing. And it, it's, this is what makes talking about this type of stuff so difficult because it's not necessarily the app the app fault or the developer's faults. No. It's how the people use it and how the people interpret it. And what I started to point out, I'm always trying to see how Spoon is the same. We've been around for a while. I never, I don't even know what Spoon is. I've never heard of Spoon before. KB's on it, man. She's always on it. But um, she is. I started to see this type of, oh, we're cool. We're having this conversation and you're not. Uh -huh. Like I started to see this type of energy and it was weird coming from adults. And I started to see like, and I, and trust me, I'm, I'm always looking at people and their actions. And a lot of these same people, there's a lot, there are a lot of people that, that, that tweet and I, I hate it. It's like the most appalling thing ever to start. Or you're on Twitter, right? Yeah, I follow you. That's a stupid question. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm no, no worries. And those same people that have that type of energy, like, oh, we're oh, we're so cool. We're having this conversation. Y'all get in. Oh wait, you can't get in because you need an invite. It's like they, it's like this type of energy. And these are the same people that tweet stuff like, oh, y'all. Uh, sorry to use this term, but oh, bitches be like. Like, I hate when people start off sentences like that. Like, there's nothing sophisticated. There's nothing intelligent that's about to come out your mouth. And when you start a sentence, like, oh, y'all, this is be like, 
Like there's no, yeah. there's nothing smart you're about to say. Like just like just wrap, wrap up the tweet, dude. Like don't even post that. Wrap stuff. up the. <laughs> like, the same people that tweet stuff like that, or they repost stuff like um. Like, there's a bunch of ignorant stuff, man. There's a whole bunch of appalling stuff that's like really childish. And I started to see this 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 like this life form of like just these big high school like popular kid type of like crowd just in that that, yeah. thri- that that thrives off of alienating people and that thrives off of having something that other people don't and i looked in the comments like i found weird like I, I really looked into this stuff i seen some people were posting their because you can with this app you can post um like a like you can post a link for people to join a room and when this started to happen i seen people post the links and they're like oh like oh y'all, y'all need to join this room and i seen um this guy I follow from Philly, and then I was really quite disappointed with him when he did this. He posted this link to his own, because he just, he could came out with a book, like I'm really, really following this guy's content. He posted this link to the, hey, everyone join the chat. And his community were saying, hey, we're not on Clubhouse, like, can you, can you help us on? And and he was replying to them, how, how, how? Like, oh, how I get you on, how? And I'm like, dude, like your community is asking you how to get in, and you're just like, how? Yeah. Like, like what are you doing, dude? Like you can't like you have to like why why are you not trying to like it's almost as if they posted that link for people that just already had it and for people that already were there and you could care less about anyone else. And I started to see people were commenting like, Oh, can you send me a link? No response. People were saying, Oh, can you get me on? No response. And when I started to see this stuff, maybe I'm overanalyzing it too much and I think that's what it is. I think no, I think that's what okay, cool. <laughs> I, I was really <laughs> an- analyzing this stuff. I'm like I'm like these people are, these people are the same people in high school that thrive off of sitting at a table that no one else could sit at, and when so, and when a and when an outsider sat down, they all probably got up and moved, or they, or they switched the conversation, or they all stopped, or they all stopped talking to make to create some type of awkward, um, some a couple type of awkwardness. These same people thrive off of alienating other people, and. I started to see these nuances and I was like, I, and at first I was like, fuck that app. I don't want anything to do with that. But I'm on it now and I posted on my story because I'm really trying to change this. About, I'm, trying, I'm really trying to change the narrative. I posted on Twitter. I was like, hey, and, I, and no one does this. I can, I can verify this. No one has done this. I posted as soon as I got on. I said, I, I said, hey, everyone, I'm on Clubhouse. I have five invites. If you want to invite, DM me. Nobody said that. No one. I couldn't find that anywhere. Because people don't, because they probably want to use those invites for their friends, or they just want to get their people on. I said, "Hey, I got five invites," and people were commenting last night. I got on, I I got on like five strangers last night, and I and I screenshotted those things. And when they commented, "Hey, can you send me one?" I I I liked it, and I said, "Yeah, I'll get you on. I got you." When people, I told someone to DM me. They DM me, say, "Hey, can you get me on Clubhouse?" I said, "Sure," and it wasn't it wasn't slow. I didn't fucking try to charge them. I didn't try to, you know, spin the bed on. I wasn't like, I was, and a girl got on. I wasn't like, hey, what, what you got for me? Like, it wasn't no weird shit. I just sent them the link. And I screenshotted those things, and I put them on my story. And I said, hey, I, I have two left. I have one left. Or I have four left. I, and I'm trying to show people that this is what building a community is about. It's not, mm-hmm. about, it's not about excluding people. It's about getting as many people in. And wow. I'm trying to show people, I'm like, hey, I just help these people. Uh, I'm really trying to, I'm trying to shift the narrative there with that app because I, because it's something that I really don't want it to, because I want that app to thrive. Like, I really think that app has a lot of potential to be um, a, com- a competitive app, but it's like if we just continue to like, to just make this like some like weird like ghetto thing, and like this like, like people like moaning on there for money or something. I'm like, this behavior is not. Yeah, it's weird. Like this, like I, I don't want to turn into something like that. And I know that I can't. You know, it's gonna, it's good. The market's gonna do whatever it wants with it. But you know, if if I can just, if, if me, if I can just get one or two people, because hey, I help those five people, random people. I help them. Maybe, and I doubt it, but maybe I inspired in those five people to want to do the same thing. Like, who knows? But you know what? Yeah. I just, I just had a. You just have to try that tribal mentality yeah the tribal mentality very tribal um six hundred dollars why does that logically make sense to distribute six hundred dollars to people 
<laughs> oh man, that's a, that's a great question. A lot of people are mad about this. Um, yeah. So uh, let's, let's let's dive into it. It's funny the way you ask that question, and and I think that's pro- that's kind of half of the problem. We 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 kind of form questions in, in in the ways that even if you answer them, it just comes out wrong. I don't. I think that's the wrong question. People have to really look into the like. I'm writing a book, starting January first. It's called Well-Rounded Fool. I've been playing this book forever, ever since I've seen that dude standing out of um, 7-Eleven. I'm writing a book that's called Well-Rounded Fool. The subtitle is How to Break the Paradox of, Int- of Intelligent Stupidity. And I'm not, uh, calling, not calling you stupid or anything, but no, there's a wave going there's, there's on. Wa- there's a wave going, there's a wave going <laughs> on. Listen, Ashley, there's a wave going on right now with people that they don't read. They talk and they say things and they don't know. And I've seen, and I've seen this since like 2017, and it always bugs me. It, I, like I hate it because if you're a really good listener, I think you're a really good listener. If you're if you're a good listener, you can hear the difference between <laughs> someone that knows what they're talking about and versus someone that's literally pulling things out their ass as they speak. And those two things are so e- easily distinguishable. And I can't stand the person on the right that's like just talking out their ass and they're just being ideological and they're just making up things. And the, these are the people that are spreading misinformation. They're influencing other people. And I know these two things are inevitable. They're got the, like they're always going to be the, the fool that's just going <clears> to <throat> talk out the side of their neck. But I think, you know, books are really books are you know, that, that's, that's that's a great way to influence a society, right? A good book because that that thing is if that thing's good. Who knows what could happen? So I'm writing this book, well-rounded fool. And it's going to be about how important it is to know what you're talking about. This book is going yes. to be about learning things before you form a distorted or a low resolution opinion about things. It's going to be about the difference between ideological thinking and actually grounding your opinions and grounding your thesis in in facts and in history and actually knowing what happened, like reading something, learning about it, internalizing it, and synthesizing it in a way where you're applying your own values to it and you're applying your actual ethics to it and then you're pre- presenting to the world a, a well-grounded and a, a, sol- and a solid a solid example of how you actually think about something that is what i'm going to try to attempt to attack in this book i'm going to talk about the social justice warriors i'm going to talk about the people that are spreading lies i'm going to try to attack um not attack i'm going to kind of bring up people in history and I'm gonna, and the, it's gonna be about a lot of things, and about, and, and it's crazy how I, I thought about this all the way back. Like you know, people call my people cool shit out of their ass. I hate the search engine. <laughs> yeah, man. <clears throat> and, and people, it's people's proclivity to want to not read is what bothers me the most. Mm. And, and what's crazy is in 2017, like, and I, and I was gonna write this book in 2018, by the way. And that just the thought of that just is just laughable. Because I, there, I was no way incapable of writing a fucking book in 2018. Like, no one was going to read that. And I waited, I waited, I waited because I knew. It's weird because as confident as I was throughout these years, I knew that. I'm not, like, if I write a book, no one's going to fucking read that. Like, it's just going to be a bunch of opinions. It's going to be a bunch of uneducated opinions. And I'm going mm-hmm. to contradict myself with this book saying, hey, you should know what you're talking about before you talk. But I just wrote a whole entire book about the same exact thing. So I didn't want yeah. that to happen. And then now I think, and for anyone in here that's like, this guy's stupid, maybe I'm not smart enough, but I, I think now I'm at a good point to where I can write a, a text and people are and like in a, in a grown man that's like 48, that has two daughters, you know, and works and, and does things, he's going to want to pick this book up and read it. Like, I'm really trying to get to that point, not like a, yeah. not like a, you know, a memoir from my friends or people that know me or just to read my, you know, my thought. I want like a, like a, like a 39 year old woman that has like, a, like that teaches at a school. Like I want her to read this shit. And in order for that to happen, it has to be, it has to be hard. Like it has to fucking like hit, it has to have facts, it has to have, yes. has to have, you know, the little indents and it has to have like the fucking, um, what is it? Like the, the MLA shit. Like it has to be fucking like, it has to be good. It has to have some shit in it. And I think I'm at a good point now. 
So um, I also don't remember your question, but this book is six hundred dollars. So back to the six hundred dollars. And trust me, all this, all that has to do with it. So yes, <laughs> six hundred dollars. This is what people are not understanding. It's part of something bigger. We have to understand that this country, and it's trust me, I'm no way like an economist. I'm not. I like. I'm. I'm just. Really, I'm just. T I, I looked into the facts and I'm presenting the facts to you. That's that's what I'm doing. So it's a part of something bigger. If you look at like the Heroes Act, look the the CARES Act, the the stat, last thing that we did, and um, if you look specifically at the economic relief section of it, it was three hundred billion dollars, and that and those and that three hundred billion dollars only went to people that had the the what is it the adjusted um house income of like less than a hundred thousand dollars, but uh -huh. but it excluded immigrants, it excluded college kids, it excluded dependents. And, and guess what? Everyone was so hot and mad about that. Oh, we're not getting it. Oh, what about all the college kids? What about all this? What about all that? And everyone was so furious about that. That last bill, yes, it was bigger. It was grossly bigger, $300 billion. But at the same at that time, it excluded a lot of people from, from getting that economic relief. And that played out. And people were, you know, were wondering, oh, where's the next one? Where's the next one? So, hey, here comes the next one. I don't think, I don't think this one has a name. I haven't yet, I've yet to see this name. This yeah. new one, the last one was two point two trillion dollars. This one is nine hundred and eight trillion dollars, so it's slightly less. But this, the economic relief package for this one is two hundred and eighty-six billion, so just fourteen billion less than the last one. But with this act, this one includes the immigrants. This act includes the college kids. It includes the dependents. It includes the immigrants. That's why it's less because it yeah. includes everyone. That's why it's less, because yeah. it includes everyone. And people are still angry. Yeah. Like, I don't understand it. Like, I was trying. You gave me what you wanted. Like, I, and all night last night, I'm like, I was trying to say this. Like, I'm trying to get you guys. I'm, I, was, I, was even, I was even posting the screenshot. I'm like, yo, it's including everyone. That's why it's less. And people are like, oh, my God, we're screwed. Israel, Israel got 500 million. Fucking Baghdad got 600 trillion. China got this. China got that. We got 600 bucks. Like, I was like, I was like, I'm like, this is why I'm writing this damn book because you grown adults are stupid and you don't fucking read anything. The the entire economic the economic package was two hundred eighty six billion dollars, not six hundred dollars. Doesn't make any sense. You're saying I that really you're saying know. that you're saying that the government gave Americans six hundred dollars. That's impossible to distribute six hundred dollars amongst three hundred and three hundred and three million Americans. That's impossible. So I don't know why we're saying that. They know damn well that's not true. It was two hundred eighty six million dollars billion dollars. The economic relief, and guess what? Small businesses got three hundred and three hundred and two billion dollars. Small businesses they got three hundred and two billion dollars in PPP loans, and I think the first one was five hundred million, but this one's less. But guess what? This one includes it, it, the the what's the one I'm looking for? The parameters within who gets what is more. It, it got more widened for who can get it. That's why the that's why the, the total gross went down because it includes more people. Like they listened to the, what everyone said the last one, and they took all those edits and took all those objections into consideration, and they got more people. They they they're, they they typically put more money in people's hands if you yeah. think about it. But yet everyone was pissed that oh it's only this and it's only that. You need to rush Rob. <laughs> you See, do, honestly. I'm like thinking that my whole head, 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 head the whole time. I'll, I'll vote for you. <laughs> I, I, okay. I, I, I appreciate that, but I want you to really think about something. This is going to be a really good point. This is how easy it is to sway people. Hmm. I, could, I, don't yes. know, could, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the second clue of what I'm talking about. This is how easy it is because I just did the bare minimum, but yet yeah. I'm coming off with like a, a potential candidate, which is fucking laughable to me. That's how easy yeah. it is to dissuade people. But the whole entire thing is with this one. It includes more people. All you do is read it. Listen, so you literally type in 900. I, I, there is, I, I don't know if there's a name for this one. I didn't, I didn't see one. I think it's just called the know. coronavirus re relief thing. And everyone's, uh, and, and like, oh my gosh, I follow a lot of politicians, and that's probably not a good idea for your mental health. And they were saying, oh, Amer America gave $500 million to Israel. No. They did not give five hundred million dollars to Israel. They, 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 they people. America is constantly trying to, like, bash Israel. 
I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Even though I think we're allies, I'm, I'm not too sure why they're always trying to bash Israel. Maybe it's like a, maybe it's like a Semitic thing. I don't know what the hell it is. <clears throat> but it, the five hundred million dollars went to the Israel. It went to um the what's it called something relief package. It went to a program. It went to a, an Israeli program that helps us with defense. That help, and I think fifty million dollars went to missiles and stuff. It went, it went to it went to like protection and it's funny it's funny how people say oh they don't give a fuck about americans you know they, they you know they spent 500 million dollars on fucking missiles i think they care about us i'm just taking a wild guess you know if they would spend 500 million dollars on fucking missiles but yet they don't care about us like it, we, have, we have to have a country first and or before we get money like, we have to have to have we have to ask, actually have a fucking country like mm-hmm. People don't understand about those things, and the government, and it's really, it's really, really lucrative, and it's really, really complicated. And I don't understand it at all, and neither does anyone else that's making these huge critiques about it. It's like, really, you think like, like you think you're going to do better? Like you, you, let's put you as Senate of fucking New York. Let's put you. Let's make you a lobbyist. Let's see. Let's see what you can do. Are you capable? Are you capable of of Fixing an economy that just went, in the, just went down the fucking shithole. Are you capable of doing this? Any of this? Do you know what you're talking about? Do you know how much money Israel should get? You haven't the slightest clue how this stuff works. And I think that we have to really learn. We have to really educate ourselves and learn how it works before we just, you know, sit back and critique it. We don't know how any of this shit works. It's stupid. It's so dumb to sit back and just be like, oh, the government sucks. Like, no, you fucking suck because you don't know how to read. Yeah. <laughs> I really, really like you. Okay. Where can we like you, stalk you, follow you, all that fun stuff? Um, I don't know about stalking, but you guys can follow me on uh, Instagram, Kendricks, K-H-E-N-D-R-I-I-X. Politics have a lot of restrictions and not much power on license. Yeah, man, we have no idea how it works. We, have, we really have a lot. So we, have a lot of, we have a lot of studying to do. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I can try, I'm trying to, I think it's from Jordan Peterson, but um, I heard something recently, not recently, like years ago, but they, they said, you don't know what's best for you. And that's why the people who are in charge, that's why they're in that position. But um, okay, last question, then I have to go clock into work. Um, I want to make a, I want your advice. I want to make a video, but I'm very, very scared to make do it. it. Make it. Don't even ask me. Just make it. No. But what if it's... I don't know. Just make it. Um, okay. Okay, I'm going to do it. Go do I'm going to do it. Fine. Okay. And if I get canceled, I blame you. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> they can't, thank you, they thank can't you. cancel you, so They can't cancel you. Why? I don't think there's much to cancel. What do you mean by that? I mean, like... How they gonna cancel you? Like, neither, neither one of us started. Like, I, I, I always have, I always have those questions. Like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get bashed for saying this. Like, like we matter, but we don't. Like, no one give a fuck about us. No one give a fuck about our opinion. Yeah, the fuck is it? I'm thinking about it too hard. When I said there's not much to cancel, I mean, the, if you say something that pisses people off, it's not, it's not gonna be detrimental to your entire success. That's what I'm saying. You know, it's not like it's not like you have five million followers and you have, and and if you say something like, then you might be in trouble, but the 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 pros to you know being like micro influencers that we can say whatever the fuck we want. So just go make that video. Don't think about. It. Don't. Th- I, I've ha- I, I've had. I was in that position. A lot. With what you're doing right now, and I can tell you that the video the video never turned out the way I wanted it to, because I had that. Could I ask myself that question? So I'm telling you, just make it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for me on. I appreciate this. No, I appreciate you. This is the highlight of my 2020. Oh wow, that's crazy. A conversation with you. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. <laughs> All right, you have a great day. Okay, you I'll talk to you later. At work. Yes, I'll try. <laughs> See you, vampire. Okay. Bye. I'm gonna like vampire. Don't get any sunlight. <laughs>